Hi there, I'm the Myth Keeper. Welcome back to my channel. If you like this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe. And if there's anything you'd like to know about in particular, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to check out my Myth Watchers Club membership right here on YouTube. You can hit the join button and it'll give you access to four videos early, which is a lot of fun. Last week on the Myth Keeper, we talked about the hold of Belksen, which is domain populated by orcs. But one of the things I found myself saying a lot in that video is the word megafauna. Because the orcs, like the mammoth lords, which lie just to the north of the hold of Belksen, uh, ride large woolly rhinoceroses, woolly mammoths, uh, sometimes they ride dinosaurs, big saber-toothed cats, uh, all kinds of prehistoric super large fauna. And the, the collective term for this is megafauna. So because I found myself using that a lot, and since we're moving away from the the frozen north in the next few region deep dives, I thought now is a good time as any to tell you a little bit about this large megafauna that uh, all of you out there playing druids, rangers, hunters, and related primal archetypes might get some value out of. Enjoy. Before we dive into the common megafauna of Pathfinder, let's explain the word and how it comes to apply in our fantastical setting. The word megafauna comes to us from both Greek and Latin. The Greek mega means large, and the Latin fauna means animal, so we can understand that megafauna are simply large animals. In zoology, the most common threshold is weighing over a ton, or about 2,000 pounds, which is to say they are animals that have a mass comparable to or larger than an ox. In practice, however, when it comes to megafauna in the fantasy world, what we're really referring to is a whole class of animals that are now extinct in our world, that reached truly epic sizes. It's unclear why many now extinct animal species, including dinosaurs and mammoths and many others, grew to be so large in the pre-human world. Various theories have been made as to why this is the case, such as the ancient world being more oxygen-rich than our current one, or that dinosaurs had specialized lighter bones and more efficient respiratory systems, a specific set of features that no modern animal possesses. On Earth, many of these large megafauna disappeared after the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event, or as it is more commonly known, the big meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs. Although the world of Pathfinder also has a long and troubled history with meteors, the ancient megafauna of their world did not get wiped out as it did in ours. The reason for this is most likely due to the Orvian vaults. Orv is the deepest of the three layers that comprise Galarian's vast underground network known as the Darklands. It is the most mysterious and isolated part of the Darklands, and consists of dozens of immense enchanted chambers called the Orvian vaults, gigantic caverns thousands of feet in height and covering regions large enough to contain entire nations. Each vault of Orv has its own rules and its own environment, and most vaults seem to be representative of entire biomes, which includes deserts, jungles, forests, and even an underground sea. How did this come to be? In a future video, I'll discuss the great underground biomes when I cover the Zeomorns, the insectile creatures that first constructed these caverns during the Age of Creation. But for now, just know that some of these biomes included large megafauna, like dinosaurs, mammoths, froghemoths, and that they have their own magical light sources, and heating, and water, and so on. So when the Earthfall Cataclysm occurred, these animals survived the thousand-year-long unnatural winter known as the Age of Darkness by going deep underground. Many places where megafauna can be found in Galarian have direct connections to the vaults of Orv. For example, in the realm of the Mammoth Lords, there were once vast passages that led from the place where the Mammoth Lord city of Tolguth lies to the Orvian vault of Deep Tolguth. Another passage can be found at a place called the World Navel as well. Another example is that dinosaurs are surprisingly common across the Shackles, and one of the islands of the Shackles, Ungoro Tadar it is called, possesses a deep pit that takes one directly to the deepest parts of Orv. It therefore seems like these massive animals eventually made their ways back to the surface once the skies had cleared, and therefore survived to this very day. However, they are not found everywhere, only in specific locations around Galarian. In the places where they did appear, these titanic creatures often became sacred to the humans that lived in those parts. The mighty dire lions of the Korir Delta were sacred creatures to the Zenj tribes of the Maneri Plains. The rocks of the Kodar Mountains are considered the sacred servants of the Cloud Giants. And of course, it is clear how close a relationship the followings of the Mammoth Lords have with the woolly mammoths from whom they take their name. Megafauna are not magical creatures. They exhibit normal animal-like intelligence and behavior. However, what marks them as special is their colossal, awe-inspiring size. Let's take a look at the most common kinds of megafauna in the world of Pathfinder. We'll look at three categories of megafauna. Dinosaurs, ancient mammals, and a catch-all at the end for other megafauna. Dinosaurs. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard, 
and it is an apt name given the frightening nature of these large reptilian creatures. Dinosaurs actually encompass a broad range of morphologies and include both carnivorous and herbivorous species. The fossil record shows that birds may have evolved from certain subspecies of dinosaurs known as theropods, some breeds of which may also possess feathers just as birds do. The feathers are primarily developed by winged species, however, so more commonly non-avian dinosaurs possess a reptilian, leathery, or pebbly skin texture. Typically, the larger the dinosaur, the more muted their coloration, and the smaller the dinosaur, the more likely they are to possess colorful markings. Because dinosaurs possess a broad range of morphologies, we're going to look at six main dinosaur groups. Genosaurs, plesiosaurs, pterosaurs, sauropods, small theropods, and large theropods. Genosaurs are a family of beaked, primarily herbivorous dinosaurs. The most iconic genosaurs include the thick, armor-plated Ankylosaurus, with its powerfully muscled tail that ends in a bony club. The fast-running iguanodons that are capable of moving just as quickly on two or four legs and have deadly thumb spikes to rend their foes. The Pachycephalosaurus, which charges at adversaries with its rounded, bony, dome-like head. The small-headed Stegosaurus, with its twin rows of sharp dorsal plates and a muscular tail terminating in a set of bony spikes. The long nasal-horned Styracosaurus, with its large horned crest angling back over its neck from its skull, and the slightly larger three-horned Triceratops, with its similarly large defensive crest. Plesiosaurs are a family of marine reptiles closely related to dinosaurs, though in fact representing a slightly different order of animal species. In roughly increasing size, the most common types of plesiosaurs are the Plesiosaurus, which measures about 10 feet long and weighs about 1,000 pounds, the Nothosaurus, which measures about 12 feet long and weighs about a ton. The Elasmosaurus, which measures about 45 feet long and weighs about 2 tons. And the absolutely massive Cronosaurus, which measures about 60 feet long and weighs about 20 tons. Pterosaurs are a family of winged reptiles, also closely related to dinosaurs, but representing another distinct animal subspecies. The smallest breed of pterosaur is the Rampharynchus a small bird-like species that often serves as a wizard's familiar in areas where dinosaurs are common. Slightly larger is the Dimorphodon, a type of pterosaur notable for its seemingly oversized skull. The most common breed is the Pteranodon, which is considered a large animal in the game world, and finally the Quetzalcoatlus, the largest breed of pterosaur, which is considered a huge animal in game terms. Sauropods are a family of dinosaurs with very long necks, long tails, small heads, and four thick pillar-like legs. Sauropods are all quite large, but among the smaller sauropods are the Amargosaurus, known for its distinctive two spiny frills that run along the back of the creature's neck. They are still huge-sized creatures in game terms. In the gargantuan category are the Brachiosaurus and the Brontosaurus. The Brachiosaurus tends to be slightly longer than the Brontosaurus from head to tail, but rarely gets quite as heavy as the Brontosaurus, which is a particularly hefty breed of sauropod. But finally, breaching the colossal size category is the largest of them all, the Diplodocus. Theropods are a family of carnivorous dinosaur. I have further subdivided this into two breeds, small theropods, which you might think of as raptors, popularized by the oversized velociraptors featured in Jurassic Park, and large theropods, of which the classic example is the Tyrannosaurus. Of the small theropods, the very smallest is called the Campsothagnus. It only measures 3 feet long and weighs 15 pounds, just like the smallest pterosaur. In certain parts of the world, the smallest theropods often serve as spellcasters' familiars. The Velociraptor is almost double this size, at 7 feet long and 35 pounds in weight, but it's still considered a small-sized creature in game terms. The Deinonychus is larger still, at 11 feet in length and weighing 150 pounds. It is considered a medium-sized creature. The very largest of the small theropods is the Megaraptor, which is considered a large-sized creature, 20 feet in length and weighing about a half ton. Before we cover the large theropods, this is a good place to make special mention of the Dimetrodon. A Dimetrodon is a quadrupedal reptile, similar in shape to a crocodile, but with a blunter snout filled with jagged, sharp teeth. Its most distinguishing feature is the massive sail that runs along the length of its back. Though pedantically it is not considered a true dinosaur, it's a closely related species and belongs here with the other carnivorous dinosaurs. A fully grown adult Dimetrodon can reach a length of up to 15 feet and weighs over a ton. Ranging in size from huge to colossal, the large theropods are as follows. The smallest is the Allosaurus, a huge swift hunter that measures 30 feet in length and weighs just under a ton. The Tyrannosaurus is an apex predator that measures 40 feet long and weighs about 7 tons. 
larger even than the Tyrannosaurus, is the Spinosaurus, which is 60 feet long and weighs about 12 tons. It is also recognizable for the sail-like ridge that runs down its back. Largest of all is the Gigantosaurus, a colossal predator that measures 65 feet long and weighs about 17 tons. Ancient Mammals This category of megafauna is reserved for large land-based mammals. I'm going to focus specifically on breeds of large mammals that on Earth we would consider to be of the Pleistocene megafauna, which is to say that they belong to the set of large animals or megafauna that lived on Earth during the Pleistocene epoch, but became extinct due to the Quaternary Extinction, which was characterized by relatively sudden but radical global ecological shifts. In Galarian, however, these ancient mammals can still be found in the remote parts of the world. Aurochs are the large, wild ancestors of smaller, more modern forms of cattle. An auroch is effectively a large horned bull, and it has a dirty black hide and an aggressive temper. Its horns are wide and sharp. Aurochs are herd animals, prone to stampeding. Many aurochs dwell in the realms of the mammoth lords, and during the annual flooding of the flood road along the hold of Belksen, many will migrate south with the snowmelt. Aurochs are a crucial part of the orc diet and their main source of leather. Cave bears are the largest and most ancient breed of bear. More aggressive and far more deadly than their lesser cousins, the cave bear, or short-faced bear, is often simply referred to as a dire bear in more civilized parts of the world, dire being the generic term for an oversized animal. However, these behemoths avoid more civilized reaches, preferring to dwell in remote wilderness locations. The cave bear is an important animal in the Kelid culture, and many Kelids take the bear for their totem animal, as they respect both its ferocity and the lengths they will go to to protect their young. Dire bats are usually found lairing in desolate areas, resting in caves or other secluded places during the day, and taking to the skies in search of prey at night. These immense creatures have an average wingspan of 15 feet and weigh roughly 200 pounds. Some tribes of humanoids, especially orcs and goblins, have learned to train dire bats to serve them as mounts, using them to fly and perform aerial strikes. Dire wolves are an enormous version of a normal wolf, and represent the wolf in its most primal form. These creatures follow the same basic behavior of regular wolves, but are much more aggressive. They are so large that they often serve giants as hunting companions and vicious guard animals. Orcs have a tendency to use trained dire wolves as mounts, generally preferring them to horses. Darker than normal wolves, dire wolves' coats tend towards blacks and deep mottled greys. An adult dire wolf is typically about 9 feet long and weighs roughly 800 pounds. Calicotheriums are massive furred creatures with vaguely equine heads and long, sloth-like forelimbs ending in wicked sharp claws. These creatures are generally docile and will attack only when provoked, but they defend their homes and young from attack viciously. Their ability to climb is superb, although only exceptionally large trees are sturdy enough to support them, and their long front limbs allow them to quickly ascend to dizzying heights, even among relatively sparse foliage. Because of their need for a habitat with large, dense trees, these creatures are most commonly found in the Mwangi Expanse. Slightly smaller than the Calicotherium, but still considered megafauna, are the Megatheriums, a related species of very large sloth. Megaloceros. In some secluded wilds, primeval megaloceri can be found, massive ancestors of the modern elk. Standing up to 9 feet tall, with bulks of 1,500 pounds and antlers growing over 12 feet wide, these are staggering creatures. Many druids consider these ancient creatures sacred, and seek to protect them in the few wild places where they can still be found. Gorgops are another creature now extinct in our world, and they are the largest breed of hippopotamus. They are 14 feet long and 7 feet tall at the shoulder, weighing in at almost 5 tons. These mega-hippos are exceedingly rare, and can only be found in the most remote parts of the Mwangi Expanse. Smilodons are saber-toothed predatory cats of the ancient world. These immense hunting cats grow to be over 12 feet long, and can weigh up to 6,000 pounds. Just as with the cave bear, among those unfamiliar with the breed, they are often simply referred to as dire tigers. There are a few other related breeds of large predatory cats across Galarian. The white-furred saber-toothed cat, for example, can be found in the crown of the world. Its canines are shorter than the typical smilodons, and its front legs are longer than its rear legs, similar to a hyena's leg structure. In the Korea River Delta, the Delta lions, sacred to the Zenj nomads of the Maneri Plains, are similarly massive predators. Once again, many people refer to such creatures simply as dire lions. In the hold of Belksen, the orcs are notorious for taming large predatory hunting cats, known as war cats. These creatures resemble smilodons, but possess a hard armored back like an armadillo. The woolly rhinoceros is a herbivore common to the realm of the mammoth lords. It's legendary for its foul temper, and its size and huge horns give it a ferocious bravery. 
Any threat, real or perceived, to the rhino or its herd is met with loud bellows and the stomping of feet. Often those who unwittingly anger a woolly rhino have no time to amend the intrusion before the beast attacks. In addition to the woolly rhino, there are various other species of megafauna that appear rhino-like in nature, including the Arsenotherium, the Brontotherium, the Embolotherium, and the Wintotherium. All of these are large, rhino-like creatures that can be found in various remote corners of Galarian. The woolly mammoth is a relative of both the common elephant and its slightly smaller cousin, the mastodon. It is a herbivore and spends its days eating nuts, fruits, berries, and grasses. The typical mammoth consumes nearly 450 pounds of food and 50 gallons of water in a given day. Mammoths travel in herds, with young moving in the center, protected and surrounded by the adults. In addition to the mastodon, another similar related species is the Dinotherium. The Dinotherium resembles an elephant, although it has a shorter, thicker trunk and sharp, downwards curving tusks. Naturally, the mammoths are important animals to the followings of the mammoth lords, who have learned to train and ride them across the rugged tundra. They are also highly prized by frost giants, as they are among the few animals large enough to serve as steeds to the mighty giants of the north. Other megafauna. Megafauna are not limited to large mammals and dinosaurs. Here are some examples of other massive creatures that can be found in Galarian. Dire crocodiles. The immense sarcosaci, or dire crocodiles, are gargantuan predators capable of catching and eating prey as large as the largest dinosaurs. These reptilian behemoths are dangerous to humanoid travelers too, and in fact are large enough to swallow a horse in one tremendous bite. Other dire creatures. Although I've touched on the dire bat, bear, lion, tiger, wolf, and now the crocodile in this and in the previous section, it's worth noting that any animal can theoretically be found in this larger dire format either because it is some ancient megafauna like a cave bear or smilodon, or because it has been magically grown through primal magic or arcane wizardry. Examples may include dire badgers, dire barracudas, dire boars, dire vultures, dire wolverines, and many more. Froghemoth. Thankfully rare, the froghemoth is one of the deep swamplands most ferocious and monstrous predators. A froghemoth is 22 feet tall at the shoulder and weighs 8 tons. Capable of catching and eating dinosaurs and even dragons, the froghemoth is a frighteningly effective ambush hunter. When lying in wait for prey, the immense creature secrets itself in deep marsh pools and mud, so only the top of its eye stalks emerge from the surface. The froghemoth's eyes are incredibly keen, but even more impressive is the monster's tongue. Like a snake, a froghemoth can taste its surroundings with extraordinary accuracy. Moas are large, flightless birds. With their necks outstretched, they stand nearly as tall as an ogre. They roam the grasslands, feeding on thick grasses and shrubs that are mostly inedible to smaller birds and mammals. While these birds are gigantic, they are rather docile and skittish, preferring to flee than fight. They can become aggressive when faced with predators or perceived threats to their young and food sources. These moas leap into the air and lash out with both of their broad, sharp talons to inflict grievous wounds. Titanoboas are massive snakes and deadly ambush predators, striking quickly from beneath the surface of the swamps and jungle waters they call home. Titanoboas vary in their coloration to camouflage effectively in their homes, typically patterned grey-brown and green to match the coloration of local foliage, water, and ground. A titanoboa is 45 feet long and weighs 2,500 pounds. Rocks are terrifying legendary birds, renowned for their ability to carry off elephants and other big animals. A typical rock is 30 feet long from beak to tail, with an 80-foot wingspan and a weight of up to 8,000 pounds. While they have hooked beaks like an eagle's, designed for slashing and tearing, most rocks prefer to seize prey in their massive clawed talons and drop them from great heights before feasting on the shattered remains. For this reason, they are often followed by flocks of scavengers like rooks, buzzards, and eagles, hoping to steal portions of the rock's messy meals. The rock generally ignores such opportunists, but if the scavengers don't take care, they nevertheless may find themselves accidentally consumed by the feeding rock. Rocks are equally comfortable over land and sea. While they are capable of sleeping in the air as they soar solo across great ranges in search of food, they generally return home to the mountains to roost and procreate. They prefer rocky crags that are completely inaccessible by terrestrial means, building vast nests of tree trunks and ruined masonry. Rock plumage is most commonly white, but can be found of many different colors, from dark brown or gold to black or blood red. Their massive feathers are highly prized, and their eggs even more so. While a rock can be trained as well as any other animal, its great size makes this a daunting task for those would-be trainers of human size. The same isn't true for giants, particularly cloud and storm giants, who often use trained rocks as guardians for their lairs. Rocks are even large enough to serve as mounts for certain giants. Mm -hmm.